Zaz Brooks here, bringing you the final recap for RoboBoat 5. Today was the main event. All those sensor calibrations, thruster tweaks, and nights in the hotel pool were all leading to this. One run to rule them all. Sponsors and spectators flocked here to the Founders Inn in Virginia Beach to check out the students' boats and watch the best of the bots battle for supremacy in the finals course. The judges looked for a points gap to select the teams that did well enough to get into the finals. Six teams made it in right away and got to spend the morning practicing on one of the qualifying courses. But the judges also chose to allow the teams who almost made it to duke it out one more time for two wildcard final slots. They each got one scoring run on the second qualifying course, bringing their best efforts together in a last ditch attempt to make the final eight. Then the judges reconfigured a completely new finals course, and here's how the action unfolded on it. Old Dominion University confidently chose the first slot due to their prowess in the navigation channel. But the constantly changing cloud cover this afternoon played havoc with their vision system, preventing them from even getting into the channel after their first attempt. Five more runs ended with just a start gate. The US Naval Academy appeared determined to set a record for determination, with 14 total course attempts in their 25 minute run. The ramrod seemed intent on ramming everything in the course, ending up hopelessly snagged on the second yellow obstacle. Resolving to go down fighting, they doubled down on six more attempts, ending up without a gate to their name. The University of Central Florida cruised through the channel on their first attempt, but got all hooked up on the blue buoy. The onlookers gasped when they risked a rerun and ended up blocked by Blue a second time. The robot struggled in vain to make for the challenges as the clock ran out, but their success in the channel earned the team fourth place and $3,000. That Blue buoy, man. What can we do about it? <laughs> I think they should just get rid of it. Stevens Institute of Technology had color matching problems which kept them to the early stages of the channel. Trying and trying again, they ran the clock down to the final seconds, finishing up with the boat circling around a speedgate buoy trying to find its way. On their first run, Embry-Riddle's boat sped through the whole channel, avoiding two of three obstacles. Going from the blue buoy to the challenge area, the boat ran into the amphibious landing dock before the team ended their run satisfied with the shortest in-water time of the day. This performance took them from wildcard finalist to third place winner by just two points, scoring them a giant check for $3,000. We had some issues with the motors yesterday, and we were hoping the same issues wouldn't crop up again, and fortunately it didn't, and on the first shot, went all the way through. Virginia Tech suffered catastrophic communications failures as soon as they entered the water, using up 21 of their 25 minutes just getting things back up and running. The crowd cheered to hear the angry buzz of their air thrusters, but five hasty attempts in four minutes weren't quite enough to get them through the gate. Villanova University cleared the channel with ease, avoiding all obstacles and only going Pac-Man on one red channel buoy. Passing the blue buoy into the challenge zone, they shot water and extended their jackpot arm before ending their run early and collecting the points. This turned out to be a clever strategic decision as they wound up in second place overall, raking in 5,000 bucks. The University of Michigan used most of their time on only one run, clearing the channel with one obstacle strike and attempting both the cheetah's hand and amphibious landing challenges. For this exemplary display of nautical autonomy, Michigan claimed first place and a $7,000 jackpot. We're pretty happy with it because we got everything we wanted to do, so we're really excited. Four teams received special judges discretionary awards of $500 each. For donating their spare hull to Universitas Indonesia to replace the one destroyed on the highway, the Technology Ambassadors Award went to Virginia Tech. For designing their boat with the logistical tail in mind, the Real World Transportability Award went to National Chen Kung University from Taiwan. For considering energy efficiency in developing a sleek, swift, agile boat, the Hull Form Design Award was given to Diponegoro University from Indonesia. And for providing replicable technical resources for the benefit of other teams in an appendix to their journal paper, the Open Source Award went to Old Dominion University. At last, the boats are packed up, the laptops powered down, and the students are partying left and right. No matter where they ended up in the rankings, they've all had an intense and valuable experience here at RoboBoat. But that's nowhere near the end of the autonomous robot action this summer. Coming up in less than one month is RoboSub. I'll be there, and I hope you'll join me. Find out about RoboSub and all the other ways to get involved in robotics by joining the community at RoboNation. You'll find everything you need at RoboNation.org.